Hello, I'm Graham Steele, CEO and founder of CryptoSense, and today I'm going to talk about NIST's new report, Getting Ready for Post-Quantum Cryptography. So this report came out on the 28th of April, 2021, so just a few weeks ago. It's the final version, uh, so there have been a few drafts floating around, but here we finally got the, the last version, the definitive copy, and it tells us all sorts of interesting stuff about how we can get ready for adoption of post-quantum crypto. So post-quantum cryptography, if you wanna know what it is, we've got another video on that I recommend that you take a look at. So I'm gonna assume you know what that is and you're interested in figuring out how to get your organization ready. So there's four really important points that the NIST report pulls out. The first is that post-quantum cryptography is not going to be a drop-in replacement for the kind of public key cryptography we're already using. So it won't be like when we had to move from the hash function SHA-1 to the SHA-2 or SHA-256 uh, hash function, uh, it's going to be much more complicated than that. And they explain why. It's because no matter what algorithms end up winning the sort of competition, the standardization process that NIST is running for post-quantum cryptography, whatever those algorithms are, they're gonna have some trade-offs and we're probably gonna end up having several winners of the process, so several recommended algorithms that will have different trade-offs in terms of key sizes, in terms of speed and of, of, of performance, so what the, the NIST uh, report uh, euphemistically calls uh, excessive processing, so needing to do a lot of processing before it can, can do encryption or whatever it is. And we're gonna have uh, trade-offs around different kinds of asymmetric operations between the two parties that are making the exchange in a way that we didn't have before. Uh, so it's gonna be a really different geometry, these, these new post-quantum asymmetric algorithms that we're gonna to have to take into account when we, we plan out the migration uh, and the adoption. Uh, the second thing is that uh, adopting post-quantum cryptography isn't just about getting hold of a new cryptography library. So it isn't just a case that we can swap out you know, OpenSSL for post-quantum OpenSSL and we're, we're ready to go. And partly that's because of the reasons of, of the first point. The, these algorithms aren't gonna work in quite the same way and we're gonna to have to work out exactly what trade-offs we wanna make for each replacement we're, we're going to do. And that, those changes are gonna to have to propagate all the way up through into the application, through the dependencies, the party code that we have, but also to requirements on users, documentation, uh, procedures for internal operations, for key management and so on. Uh, so there's quite a lot to think about, not just a, a sort of library uh, swap out. Third point is they recommend that even now we start identifying automated tools that can help create uh, cryptography inventory. So a list of everywhere that we're using cryptography and what it is we're using it for. So how we're using it, because that's the kind of inventory that we're going to need to plan out our migration. So CryptoSense makes a number of tools for that. We'll talk about that uh, at the end. The fourth thing is that for each identified use of public key cryptography that we want to migrate to post-quantum, the NIST report identifies 15 bullet points to consider for each usage to figure out how this should be transitioned. So, so to what algorithm should we map this and how should we make that mapping? That includes those technical low level things like key size requirements, performance requirements, but also more organizational requirements. So things like thinking about what is the end of life of this product? So perhaps this product that has this cryptography and I'm gonna get rid of it or my supplier's not gonna even supply it by the time a quantum cryptographer, quantum computer comes around, so I won't actually really need post-quantum cryptography in there. So you've got all those 15 bullets to think about for, for each uh, element of the inventory. So that's basically the scheme that the report uh, lays down. You can get this report for free. It's, there's a link to it that we've put to the NIST website there in the description of the video. If you want to find out more about getting ready for post-quantum cryptography, we have a solution briefing in the CryptoSense knowledge base. There's a link to that also in the video description. If you sign up there, you'll get that. You'll also get loads of other applied cryptography guides that you might need, high-level questions like cryptography inventory, low-level things about key stores. It's all there, uh, and it's really great stuff. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with post-quantum cryptography and other applied cryptography topics. And I'll see you again soon here on the channel for another video.